Berkshire Hathaway has a solid track record of outperforming the S and P500. Since 1965, Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors in the world, has indeed followed a focused approach of buying individual stocks to beat the market and benefit shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway. His approach has yielded significant success, with Buffett achieving an average annual return of 19.8%, outperforming the S and P500, which has delivered an approximate 9.9%. Buffett doesn't necessarily recommend that most people replicate his active investment strategy. Instead, he often advises passive investing for the majority of investors as he acknowledges that individual stock picking is not for everybody. In fact, most average, long-term investors would benefit from a much simpler strategy, he says, investing in low-cost index funds. Jack Bogle, who I talked about in the annual report, Jack Bogle has probably done more for the American investor than any man in the country. Jack, could you stand up? There he is. John Bogle created Vanguard in 1974 and introduced the first index fund for individual investors in 1976 called the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, designed to track the performance of the Standard & Poor's 500 Index. The idea was destined to upend the status quo by providing ordinary people with cheap and low-risk ways to invest. The prevailing approach emphasized actively managed funds that attempted to outperform market averages through stock picking and market timing. However, Jack Bogle believed that most actively managed funds actually underperformed the market due to high management fees. He argued that index funds presented a more cost-effective and efficient way for individual investors to access solid market returns. Fees are a big reason why index funds typically outperform their actively managed counterparts. The average asset-weighted fee for an index fund was 0.12% in 2020, versus 0.62% for active funds, according to Morningstar. Indeed, a huge percentage of fund managers don't generate returns over their benchmark index. In the case of actively managed US equity funds, 89% underperformed the S and P Composite 1500 index over 10 years to the end of 2019, according to the S and P Dow Jones Spiva report. Jack Bogle, many years ago, he wasn't the only one that was talking about an index fund, but he, it wouldn't have happened without him. I mean, Paul Samuelson talked about it, Ben Graham even talked about it, but uh, the truth is it was not in the interest of, invest, of the investment industry of Wall Street. It was not in their interest actually to have the development of an index fund, of the index fund, because it brought down fees dramatically and as we've talked about some in the reports and other people have commented, index funds overall have delivered for shareholders a result that has been better than Wall Street professionals as a whole. And part of the reason for that is that they brought down the costs very significantly. So when Jack started, uh, very few people, certainly Wall Street did not applaud him. And he was the subject of some derision and, and uh, uh, a lot of attacks. And now uh, we're talking trillions when we get into index funds. And we're talking a few basis points when we talk about investment fees in the case of index funds, but still hundreds of basis points when we talk about fees elsewhere. And I estimate that Jack, at a minimum, has saved, left in the pockets of investors without hurting them overall in terms of performance at all, uh, gross performance. He's put tens and tens and tens of billions into their pockets, and those numbers are going to be hundreds and hundreds of billions over time. Let's first understand passive investing. To understand passive investing, think of the saying, slow and steady wins the race. Passive investing is a long-term strategy for building wealth. Your money is used to buy shares in a group of companies. This group of companies is called an index. 
If these companies collectively do well, so will the index and your money will grow. Because passive investing requires minimal human intervention, fees are relatively low. However, as passive investing only mirrors the performance of an index, your investment does not outperform mm. that index. On the other hand, active investing involves a dedicated portfolio manager overseeing your investment. Active managers aim to outperform the index by strategically selecting shares in companies they predict will do well while avoiding those they expect will fall. The goal is to identify lucrative investment opportunities to really make your money grow. The downside is that this doesn't always occur, and active management leaves room for error. A lot depends on finding a great manager who can pick investments better than the rest. Due to their hands-on approach, active managers typically charge higher fees for their services. Jack Bogle's objective was to provide regular investors with a product that offered broad diversification across the market with minimal fees. This approach aimed to enable investors to achieve returns very close to the actual market average. Over time, Bogle's efforts have put tens and tens of billions of dollars into the pockets of investors, with the potential for these numbers to grow to hundreds of billions in the future. In summary, Jack Bogle's impact on the investment landscape has been substantial, providing everyday investors with a low-cost, diversified investment option that has stood the test of time. The index has returned a historic annualized average return of around 10.13% since its 1957 inception through the end of 2022, whereas Warren Buffett's strategy of selecting stocks has consistently yielded over 20% annual returns since 1965. Warren Buffett emphasizes the importance of temperament over intellect, and no one understands its value better than the Oracle of Omaha. Let's break down what he means by this statement. Intellect. While intellect is essential in understanding financial statements, analyzing companies, and making informed investment decisions and understanding the investments that you've made, Buffett suggests that being highly intelligent is only one of the crucial factors for success in investing. The majority of people follow a typical routine, working five days a week and unwinding on the weekends. They prefer not to dedicate every three moments scrutinizing financial statements. Individual stock selection, while not impossible, is challenging. It demands time, commitment, and crucially, a temperament. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. Because this is not a business where you take polls, it's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. Temperament. Buffett is referring to one's emotional and psychological disposition when it comes to investing. It involves qualities like patience, discipline, and the ability to stay calm and rational in the face of market fluctuations and uncertainties. Buffett's success isn't just about picking the right stocks, it's about having the right mindset. In the chaotic world of Wall Street, where emotions run high and fortunes can be made or lost in seconds, <laughs> keeping a cool head isn't just an advantage, it's a necessity. Why? Because the market is, in essence, a manic depressive beast. It swings from euphoria to despair, often without rhyme or reason. If you're swayed by these emotions, you'll buy high, sell low, and make decisions you'll regret. Buffett's genius lies not just in his analytical skills, but in his ability to remain calm, rational, and patient when everyone else is losing their heads. That's temperament. Investing can be challenging. Even experienced investors who try to time the market to buy at the most opportune moments can come up short. Dollar cost averaging involves purchasing stocks at regular intervals, which can be monthly, weekly, or any other designated period. The crucial aspect of this strategy is that these purchases occur irrespective of the asset's current price. With dollar cost averaging, there's no need to speculate on whether stocks are rising or falling. 
You make periodic purchases regardless of whether the market is bullish or bearish. On the other hand, the buy-the-dip strategy entails purchasing stocks specifically when their prices are decreasing. This approach capitalizes on the potential to acquire shares at a discounted price during market downturns. However, the challenge lies in accurately predicting the extent to which the stock will decline. You need to time the market for this strategy to be effective. For instance, instead of investing $1,000 in S and P500 at one time, someone using dollar cost averaging might invest $50 in S and P500 at the same time every week for 20 weeks. When using dollar cost averaging, an investor would spread their investment over regular intervals. In this case, $50 invested in the S and P500 every week for 20 weeks. This approach helps mitigate the impact of short-term market volatility and allows the investor to buy more shares when prices are lower and fewer shares when prices are higher. In contrast to investing a lump sum of $1,000 at once, dollar cost averaging aims to reduce the risk associated with attempting to time the market. While it does not guarantee profits or protection from losses, dollar cost averaging is a disciplined strategy that can provide a more stable and systematic approach to investing over time. Index funds may sound intimidating, but they're just a basket of stocks that represent a broad market. In the case of an S and P500 index fund, you're buying a small piece of the 500 largest publicly traded US companies. This results in automatic diversification, which minimizes your overall risk. Importantly, there's no market timing or individual stock picking involved. The fund simply tracks the performance of the stock index. Regardless of which method you choose, you don't have to dump a ton of money into an index fund to get started. Buffett actually recommends the opposite. Invest small amounts slowly over a long period of time. This is known as dollar cost averaging, and it's a sound strategy for most long-term investors. Most importantly, Buffett says, never overpay in fees. Yeah, I would say that in terms of the index fund, I would, I would just take a very broad index. I, I, would, I would take the S&P 500 as long as I wasn't putting all my money in at one time. If I were going to put money into a index fund in relatively equal amounts over a 20 or 30 year period, I would pick a, I would, I would pick a fund. And I know Vanguard has very low costs. I'm sure there are a whole bunch of others that do. I just haven't looked at the field. But I would be very careful about the costs involved. Uh, because all they're doing for you is, is buying that index. Uh, I think that the people who buy those index funds on, on average will get better results than the people that buy funds that have higher costs attached to them because it's just a matter of, of, of math. If you have a very high percentage of funds being institutionally managed and a great many institutions charge a lot of money for doing it and others charge a little, they're going to get very similar gross results but different net results. And I recommend to all of you reading John John Bogle's written a couple of books in the last five years, and I, I can't give you the titles, but they're very good books, and anybody investing in funds should read those books uh, before investing, or if you've already invested, you still should read the books, and, and it's all you need to know, uh, really, about fund investing. Warren Buffett emphasized another crucial point in the video, highlighting the challenge of committing to a 20- or 30-year time period when practicing passive investing. While market diversification and regular investment intervals are key aspects of this strategy, the true difficulty lies in the long-term commitment required for the approach to unfold effectively. Passive investing success is contingent on investors adhering to the strategy over an extended period. Some individuals may perceive it as simply collecting a 10% return every year. However, it's important to understand that historical averages don't mean a consistent 10% return annually. The market experiences fluctuations, with some years seeing negative returns, while others witness substantial gains. To reap the benefits of passive investing and allow dollar cost averaging to even out market volatility, investors must commit to a long-term time horizon. This commitment is essential for the strategy to align with the long-term average annual return of the market. Despite the occasional fluctuations, those who genuinely committed to a long-term time horizon have achieved substantial success in building wealth. And truly, this stands as the primary advantage of the passive investing strategy. It's a method that, as we've explored, has consistently proven effective for investors throughout history. The S&P 500 has delivered an annual return of 10.13% since 1957. Remarkably, 
Investors pursuing this strategy didn't need to engage in complex analyses, use their brain or sacrifice their time, spending weekends immersed in studying financial statements, or dedicate time to activities like watching stock market news. The best single thing you could have done on March 11th, 1942, when I bought my first stock, was just buy an index fund and, 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 and never look at a headline, never think about stocks anymore, just like you would do if you bought a farm. You just buy the farm and let the, let the tenant farmer run it for you. And I pointed out that if you'd put $10,000 in an index fund that reinvested dividends, and I paused for a moment to let the audience try and guess how much it amount to, and it would come to $51 million now. And the only thing you had to really believe in then is that America would win the war and that America would progress as it has ever since 1776 and that American business, if America moved forward, American business would move forward. You didn't have to worry about what stock to buy. You didn't have to worry what day to get in and out. You didn't, you didn't know the Federal Reserve would exist, <laughs> whatever it might be. And uh, uh, America works. As Warren Buffett mentioned, the simple belief that one needs to hold that the American economy would move forward over time and American businesses will evolve alongside it. Interestingly, for passive investors, less attention often translates to better outcomes. This fundamental principle is why the most accomplished active investor in the world, Warren Buffett, advocates for passive investing. It's essential to acknowledge the inherent risks in any stock market investment. This video does not propose specific recommendations for purchasing any stocks. Market risk persists even with a diversified portfolio, and astute investors express concerns about removing price discovery from stocks, which could contribute to a market bubble. Investors find index funds especially useful for many reasons. The downsides of investing in index funds include the following. So, while passive investing has its merits, there are still several factors to consider before adopting the label of a passive investor.